And bizarre because just a few years back, it was actually believed that these contact binaries are maybe a little bit rare. It was expected to happen sometimes, but not as many times as we seem to find them with all of the different missions. And just like that, we get another contact binary, literally around the second object visited by Lucy. Which now seems to confirm a slightly older hypothesis in regards to these contact binaries potentially being super super common in the entire solar system. And so basically, even though we thought they were rare, it seems to be quite the opposite. And so what exactly happens here and how exactly do they form? Well, they're called contact binaries because this is two objects touching. And based on different models and different simulations, they have to touch really slowly. A typical impact velocity here would be maybe about 50 millimeters per second. So basically just a gentle touch. And then following this really gentle collision, these objects basically join together and sometimes end up forming a much larger shape that makes them look super long, sort of resembling a typical peanut. And these peanut-shaped asteroids have been discovered in a lot of different places. But we actually didn't even know they existed until some of the earliest observations from Jupiter. And the original explanation was actually used for Jupiter's Trojan, Hector, another somewhat long object that back in 1971 was explained to be maybe a binary that became a single object. Unfortunately, Lucy is not visiting this object, so we're not going to know for sure. But the question was, of course, why exactly does this happen and what's responsible for their formation? 